Hi, Jeff Rhodes again, uh, another video on Microsoft 365 and particularly the Power Platform. I wanted to go back to a video that, um, that I did about four months ago about using Power Apps and SharePoint Power BI to build a blood pressure tracking solution. So what I want to do today is, is add Power Automate to the mix to give like a monthly uh, summary of the previous month's blood pressure readings. So I uh, encourage you to check this one out for the full story, but let's go take a quick look and then we'll get into the Power Automate. So as a reminder, what I had was a SharePoint list with pretty simple, we had a, a date and time uh, column and then a systolic, which is the high number, diastolic, the low number, and a notes column. And then we built a, a mobile footprint so I could use it on my phone, which I do quite a bit, and go in and, and put the values in there. And we had a little bit of, of logic so that since there's not a date time control inside Power Apps, I did a, a regular entry box with some regular expressions so that you could type in the time if you were doing it a, you know, a bit different than when you opened the app. So, and you can see the notes. And then we did a, a, a Power BI, and I've enhanced that a little bit since the video. So I, I did a couple things with it. The main thing I did is added these lines. I thought it'd be nice to see like the target value 120 over 80 uh, so I added those on the see when I roll over and I can see the the times and stuff so let me let me jump over to power bi and just show that since we hadn't done it I did that with a measure so see I came up and said new measure and I just said diastolic target equals 80 and then I had a systolic target equals 120 and then on this um, on the visualization, I just added both of them. So it's kind of nice so that whenever I roll over, I see the, both the target uh, of both. And then I set the colors just so the, you know, uh, so it would, you know, show up, you know, uh, kind of match the colors of the lines. All right, so that's where we are so far. Let's go back to the browser. So what I want to do today, if I go back to the SharePoint list, is I want to get the last month and do like a scheduled flow so that every month it'll email and send me a Teams chat. And you can even imagine if it was a serious situation that you send it like right to the doctor or something like that. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. So let's go over to Power Automate and I'm going to say Create and I'm going to say a scheduled cloud flow. So we'll call this video um, and we'll say send last month blood pressures like that. And we'll start it right now, but we'll say every month and we'll say create. And it does, I'm not going to use Copilot today, it uses the new designer which is good and I need a couple variables here. Uh, so I'm gonna just go ahead and start with that. So I'll come over and say variables and I need to initialize a variable and I'm just gonna call it var 30 days ago. Cause technically there's not a month thing. So I'm not gonna worry about 31 days versus 30, 28 days and leap year and all that. I'm just going to get the last 30 days. Um, so I could have actually sent it every 30 days. I'm just going to say it once a month, but it's close enough. And as I've talked about, I always like to, to put the name so I can see immediately what it's for. And I'm going to do a string. And this one's a little bit challenging. Uh, so let's spend just a second. So I'm going to do a function because what I need to do is take the current date and go back 30 days. So and it's easier to do it from the inside. So I say add days, and this is where there isn't, see there's not an add months. So I'm gonna say add days. And if we look the first one, we want the timestamp. So that's UTC now, see how it suggests that to me. And then the second one is the number of days we wanna add. So we need to say minus 30. So that whole thing is a date right there. So I could do that in a separate variable, but I'm just gonna go ahead. 
what I want for my query is I want an actual date in a correct format. So you can look online, see what format it wants. It wants the year first. So I'm going to say format date time. Whoop, date. And then notice it wants a timestamp. So that whole first thing is the timestamp. And then now with a single quote, I just need to put it in. So you can look it up, but I want the year and four digits, the month, and the day, like that, in close parentheses. So we'll see if we got that right. And we'll be able to see that in the debugger, make sure that we did it right. So that's what's going on there. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and query my list. So I'm going to say, looks like I got the one I want right there, get items. And I got to know my site. So it's the sample site. The name of my list, blood pressure. And then real importantly, I'm, I need to query this. So I want to say the most important is the filter query. So let's go back. This can bite you sometimes. You've seen me do this before, but I like to always go right back to the list name because it can cause big time errors if you don't get this name right. So go into the column. Because if you rename this column, it wants the original name. So see the very end of this? That's what I want. So it turns out to match the column name, but it doesn't always. And particularly if you get spaces in the names, you can have like, you know, little special characters and everything. So best to just get it just like that. And so I'm going to say blood pressure date greater than GT single quote, and then I want to grab that variable. So that's why we did that. So I can say it's greater than 30 days ago. And then I want to go ahead and order by that date just so that they're all sequential. Okay, so there, that will get us all the, um, all the items. So I need another variable, because what I'm going to do is build this as HTML. So I'm going to say variable and initialize, and I'll just call uh, this var blood pressure display. Let me make this a little bit bigger too. Maybe make that a little easier to see. And I'm going to make that a string. And I'm going to initialize that. And here's where you got to know some HTML. So you've seen me do this in a couple other videos. It turns out the Outlook will use a style sheet. And Teams won't. But it still looks okay either way. But I'll go ahead and put a style. And I'll copy that. I'll show you where I can get that, actually. So I'll grab that. Uh, but how would you find that? So I'll usually come over here and just say, uh, I, I like the W3 schools. And I'll say uh, table border, like that. And it comes just like that. So you see that's where I grab that from. And you can, you know, obviously play with this as one pixel solid black one and so forth. So that that gets us the style. And then what we want to do is we're going to build the first part of the table. And then we're going to pin a row for each row for each reading. And then we'll close off the table at the end. So I'm going to say table, HTML. Again, you can go to that same W3 schools if you want. We want the row. And then what we want is the header, TH. So I'm going to put that in the clipboard. So I'm going to type that a fair amount. And we just want our column name. So I'm going to say date. And I won't type the closing ones or I won't paste it. But then we'll paste that. And then we want systolic. Close the header, 
Diastolic. And nodes. And then I need to close off the row. So again, front slash and then close the row like that. And then we'll close, we'll do go at the end. So now we're gonna go through there uh, and, and go through the different items. So I want this apply to each. But instead of saying that, because that can be understood, I'm just gonna say loop through blood pressures. And we'll get it. And the only choice we have is the body there. So that's great. And then what do we want to do inside the loop? Well, we want to append to our variable. So we'll go into the variable. Go to see more and say append the string variable. And then we have the var blood pressure display. So we'll just put that up there, var blood pressure display. And then here we need to use those same uh, HTML. So I'm gonna, again, do the, the row. I'm gonna do the column. Notice we use TD this time. So I'm gonna put that in the clipboard. And then we just grab out of our row what we want. So, oh, but this first one, we want to, to do the date. Um, you know, we want to format that correctly. So let's go back. Let me close that for a minute. We'll do this again. We'll do the function. And we'll do that format date time. And what I want to do now is I want to go, and then we want to go back to the dynamic content and grab the blood pressure date like that. So that's the first part there. And then all we got to do is, luckily we have a built-in one called the little g like that, which just gives us a general date time. So that's good enough for what we want. So we'll put that in there and then we'll close the column paste in the new column, and then these ones are easier because we get them straight out. So we have the systolic there. Paste in, we'll do the diastolic. And if you don't see all the ones you want, just say see more. So there's the diastolic. TD, paste that in again. And we've got the notes. And we got to do the close that, close the column, and then close the row like that. There we go. So we're almost done. So this is the whole loop. The only reason I like the, the new designers, you can kind of see it a little better and come outside that. And now we just need to finish off our variable. So we'll just go to variable. Again, we'll append to the string variable. So we'll just say bar blood pressure display final, I'll call it. And all we got to do is put at the end is close off our table. Like that. There we go. It says invalid parameter, but now it's done. There. And now we're ready to send it. So let's do teams first. And there's a couple of these. I, one I like to do is I like to say post message in a chat or channel. So I'll post this flow bot. Post in a chat, and then I got to put who to send it to. So I'm going to send it to myself. So this is my Microsoft 365. I'm going to put 
that in the clipboard. And then I'll say blood pressure reading sense. And I'll go ahead and put the 30 days ago like that. And then I just insert that variable, like that. Let's do one more. We'll send it via Outlook as well. For whatever reason, send an email is not showing, but there it goes. I'll send it same one and I'll say, Put this in the subject this time because the Teams chat doesn't have a subject. So we'll say blood pressure readings since 30 days ago. And then in this case, I don't need to put it again. So I'll just put the blood pressure display and save. So let's see if we get any errors. Nope, so let's test it. We'll run it, run the flow. Let's go into debug mode and see as it runs here. Let's see, so it looks like, yeah. whoops, I guess got a notification you might've heard came through. Let's go look at our variables for a minute. Just kind of make sure. So today's the 23rd, so it did get successfully 30 days go, that's the 24th of May, so that's good. Let's go to get items. Oh, yeah, and we got those, but then we can see we got 10 ones, which kind of makes sense, 10 readings, so that we could count them up, that sounds about right. So let's go over and look at Teams. So here's Teams, I got new messages. Looks good. So we get the, I didn't have one on the 24th. So first one is the 27th and diastolic, diastolic. Looks like we got, we got some notes. Let me go over to Outlook. There's one came in. Oh, it didn't do exactly what I expected there because the I didn't have the borders on there, so I probably made some sort of mistake. It, it doesn't, this one, Teams puts it without it, but I sh should have gotten some borders in my uh, HTML. So let's go back. That'll give us something else to work on before we sign off. So let's, let's go look back at this initialize uh, style. Close style, so that looks, let's go in and edit it. It's nothing, not obvious from there, but maybe when we look at it, it's probably, I missed something in the, there, let's go back to our W3 table. Let's see, it should have said table, bracket, and bracket. Let's just put, copy that. Oh, looks like I missed, see right here, I have the beginning squiggly bracket, but not the end one. So that's why it didn't format correctly. Yep, so I was missing this right there. So when I copied it over, I just didn't grab the line. So let's save that. And we'll run the test again, and we'll just check the email. Like I said, it won't affect the Teams one because it doesn't, at least right now, respect that anyway, but the email should be, show up with a uh, nice border. There, I just got a notification from Teams. Ah, there we go. So there's the new one. See, now I've got the border. That's what I was looking for. So that's where that style went on. So uh, almost just right at 20 minutes. So pretty short for me. So I hope you guys have a great day and hope this is helpful. Talk to you soon.